Shalom and praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining class. Uh, welcome all our online students and also welcome to our e-learning students uh, who will be joining class uh, uh, or who will be listening to this lecture later on. Uh, before we look into um, receiving God's guidance for our life, the publication, can we just pause for a word of prayer? Can um, one of our um, online students please lead us in prayer? Anyone can lead us in prayer, please? Can Esther, anyone can lead us in prayer? Esther, Deepu, Koramita, can one of you unmute your mics and lead us in prayer, please? Jennifer, Jairam, anyone likes to lead us in prayer this morning? Good morning, ma'am. Ah, good morning, yes, yeah, please. OK, thank you. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning. We thank you for this session, O oh Lord. We thank you so much for your wonderful grace over our lives. Lord, we are going to begin the classes. Lord, help us open our uh, spirit of understanding over the word of God. Lord, help us to grasp everything. And um, uh, hallelujah, grow in us uh, spiritually. Hallelujah, help everybody to grow in our uh, spiritual way, Father God. Hallelujah, strengthen our inner man. Hallelujah, pour out your spirit heavily so that we can uh, walk in a way that you're supposed to be, Father God. Hallelujah. And bless the uh, pastor also. Bless her in a special way, Lord. Hallelujah. As she's teaching us, the Lord, help us to, Lord, understand everything, Lord. Bless all the online students, offline students, and everybody. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. What is your name, please? Because uh, here it shows as Deepu. Yeah, my name is Deepu, ma'am. Deepu? Okay. Thank yeah. you, Deepu. Thank you. Um, okay, so last week we were looking at Chapter 5. Uh, we looked at Chapter 3 and Chapter 4. Basically, we're looking at the primary ways in which the Holy, uh, you know, we receive guidance. What are the two primary ways we receive guidance from God? What are the two primary ways that we receive guidance from God? God's word and the Holy Spirit, ma'am. Yes, thank you, Lucy. God's word and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we looked at uh, God's word, how God leads us and guides us through his word in chapter 3. And we are now looking at chapter 4, where we are looking at how the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. So why is it called the inner witness? Because the Holy Spirit witnesses or uh, we receive guidance leading, <coughs> sorry, we receive guidance leading and direction in our spirit man, in our inner being, okay? So we looked at um, common ways the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, the common ways that the Holy Spirit bears witness in our spirit man. And so we're going to look at eight different ways that the Holy Spirit bears witness in our inner person, in our inner man, in our spirit man. Uh, so one way is through quickening of scripture. The second way is through the assurance within. The third one is the desire within. And the fourth one is the knowing within. Okay, so we stopped at uh, the fourth one, which is knowing within. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit reveals the plans, the purposes, and the directions of God in our life. And when we receive it in our spirit, man, we just know that it is from God. Okay? We just know it is from God. So when, I, like I was sharing, when I was in 12th standard, I was praying to God and asking him what he wants me to do next. And... Um, you know, uh, 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 God spoke to me and he said he wants me to go to full-time Bible college. But at that time, I did not know about the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. The church I came from never spoke about the third person, the Trinity, Holy Spirit. So I didn't know the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. But I just knew God would speak. But when God spoke to me that one week, I, had, I just knew within that God was calling me for full-time ministry and there was this 
deep sense of assurance, the deep sense of confidence that, yeah, this is God. No, this is not my own voice. This is not somebody else speaking to me, but it is God. So, you know, when uh, when God speaks to us, and the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we just know within that it is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit leads us in his plans and his purposes and his directions. Okay. And we looked at the example of Moses, right, last week. Moses just knew in his heart that God had raised him up in the in the palace, uh, given him the training so that he can be a leader to deliver his people out of Egypt. Okay. We look at the fifth um, common way that the Holy Spirit bears inner witness in our spirit man. The fifth one is a prompting. Now, prompting is a little more stronger, a little more forceful than knowing. Okay. Um, and knowing comes as an understanding when when you when you know that God is speaking to you, you know, in your spirit, man, it's an understanding that you have. But when it's a prompting, it is a little more stronger and forceful than the knowing. And uh, it moves you to take some action. OK, immediately you are you're moved to take some action. Um, action so it's important that we may we are sensitive to what the holy spirit is speaking to us and we also need to recognize what the holy spirit is prompting us to do sometimes the holy spirit will prompt you to take the phone and to call somebody unexpectedly see and then when you call them, they'll say, hey, thank you for calling because I was going through this, 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 this. Or, you know, this happened, that happened. I don't know if it's happened with you. It's happened a couple of times with me. You know, last night I was going for my walk and I, I just sensed this deep prompting within. You know, it can be small things, but deep prompting in it within to call up one of my friends who I haven't called up for a long time. So when I called her up, she told me that, you know, yesterday was her 25th wedding anniversary and I missed it. And she said, I was waiting for you to call me and pray. And I'm saying, I'm so sorry, I didn't know. And uh, I think it was just God who was asleep. The Holy Spirit was leading me to call you. So I called her up and I just prayed for her. So I just sensed the prompting in my heart when I was going. I usually don't call. But I just sensed the prompting in my heart to call her, and I just called her even though it was late. So sometimes the Holy Spirit will prompt us to call somebody, to visit somebody, uh, to write to somebody. And, you know, when you get this prompting, there is an action, immediate action that you want to take. Okay. I'll give you another example. Just the last week, I was going through some challenge in my life, and I was so emotionally distressed. Uh, I didn't know, I couldn't pray, I couldn't think, I was just wanting, what should I do, what should I do? I just didn't get any solutions and my mind was so, you know, occupied and emotionally so distressed, I was not able to hear from God. And I'm just praying, God, show me what I need to do, what action, step I need to take. You know, this is really getting a little difficult for me. And suddenly when I was just, you know, I'm not hearing from God, I'm just sitting down. And, uh, you know, I just finished praying and suddenly this the Holy Spirit put, put in my heart to, you know, WhatsApp this person who I haven't WhatsApp for years. And the Holy Spirit is saying, just tell this person. And this person is a pastor. So I messaged uh, him and, um, you know, he messaged back later on the next day. And what he said, just one or two lines, just gave me more clarity, guidance and help and the answer that I was looking for. Just two words, but it was the guidance, it was the help. It just brought so much of clarity. It removed all the doubts and the, the cloud that was just there and you know that uncertainty. And, um, and now I know for sure what I need to do, what action I need to take. So it was the Holy Spirit who was just prompting me to send a text message to this pastor and he prayed and he just gave me the answer and it was just the right answer. So sometimes the Holy Spirit will nudge you to do things like that. You know, you could uh, take the action. There are some examples given here. Pastor has given a lot of examples for all of these points. You can um, read his life story and you can also, not now when I'm teaching, but later on, and then you can understand more about the, uh, the ways that the Holy Spirit bears inner witness in our spirit man. Okay. Now the sixth thing is a stirring within. We already looked at stirring within when we were studying 
fulfilling God's purpose for our life. Okay, so I'm not going to dwell deep into this or explain deep because I've already explained it uh, when we looked at the nine guideposts in fulfilling God's purpose for your life. But just like to say that the stirring within is more stronger than the prompting. Okay, it's much stronger than the prompting. The stirring is so uh, strong that you would need to take immediate action. Okay, we'll just look at uh, one or two examples. Uh, in Ezra chapter 1, verse 1, we see that the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and the Lord stirred up his spirit to allow the people of the Israelites, the Hebrews in Persia, to go back to Jerusalem and to settle down in their own place. Okay, so here we see that God stirring up the heart of this pagan king who does not know about God, and God was bringing about His plans and purposes through this king. So the stirring was so strong in His heart that immediately He fell into action and He allowed the Hebrew people to go back to. Uh, Jerusalem. Okay. Another example is Haggai chapter 1, verse 14. We see that, um, you know, God stirred up the hearts of the people to rebuild the temple. Now, the people came back from uh, captivity from Persia. They come back to Jerusalem. Now they are building their own homes. They're settling down. They're doing farming. They're, you know, comfortable. But God's temple was in ruins. So we see that God stirred up their hearts to build the, rebuild the temple. And we see that the, the stirring was so strong that it called them all to action and they all went ahead and they built the temple and they finished uh, completing the temple. So we see that the stirring, sometimes God stirs us up for action. And the action is so, stirring is so strong that we take immediate action it's much more stronger than the prompting and the knowing with it okay now the seventh one uh, the way the holy spirit um, bears inner witness in our spirit man is through the foreknowledge within okay so uh, remember jesus uh, when he speaks about the holy spirit when he promises his disciples that the holy spirit will come he says the holy spirit will show you things to Come, okay, he will show you things ahead of time, what is going to happen. So the Holy Spirit reveals the mind and the plan and purposes of God, what is going to happen much in advance. Okay, so the Holy Spirit can reveal to you what is going to happen two years down the line, five years, ten years down the line, so that you can prepare your um, self. But how do we know it? It's important for us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to listen to the Holy Spirit and uh, so that he, when he reveals to us, we can take that into um, action. One example of foreknowledge is in Luke chapter 2, where Simeon is a very old man and God promises him, it's a foreknowledge that he gives him, promises him that, you know, he would not die till he sees the Messiah. Okay, so that is one of the foreknowledges he receives that God promises him that he will see the Messiah and then he will die. Okay, and then on the day when Mary and Joseph bring baby Jesus, as was a custom, to the temple when he was a baby, uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, um, gives a foreknowledge within to Simeon and tells him to go to the temple. So when he comes to the temple, he sees the baby Jesus and he knows this is the Messiah. He takes the baby and he blesses him. Okay. So here we see in the life of Simeon, there is two foreknowledges. One that is where God tells him, you know, that you are not going to die till you see the Messiah. That is one foreknowledge which is, which is extending for a period of time. And also a second foreknowledge, which is immediate at that time, where he says, go to go into the temple and you will see the Messiah. So two foreknowledges here we uh, see. So sometimes the Holy Spirit will give you a foreknowledge of what is going to happen in your life three years down the line, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Why does he do it? So that he can prepare you so that you are prepared mentally, emotionally to take on or to take hold of what God is calling you, okay? 
And then there is the warning within. The eighth one, the last one, is the Holy Spirit also bears witness in our spirit man to a warning. Now, how can they have, uh, what is a warning? Sometimes we feel tightness, you know? Uh, when you're going to do something, when you're going to start something, when you're thinking of doing something, when you're thinking of meeting someone, thinking of going somewhere, thinking of taking a trip or uh, planning something, you know, personal, there is uh, a tightness you feel, okay? Or sometimes you feel uneasiness. Sometimes you feel there is no peace and joy. Whenever you're thinking about this, you want to do this, you're planning to do this, there is no peace and joy. Something is holding you back. Something is pulling you back. There is uneasiness. So all of this is the Holy Spirit is telling you that, hey, don't step into it. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't speak with that person. Be careful. Okay? Because he's warning you of the challenges that are going to come in the future. Okay? So even in our spirit man, the Holy Spirit can warn us. Okay? Don't go there. Don't speak this. Don't say this. Don't send this message. You know, the Holy Spirit can warn us, but we need to be very sensitive uh, to the Holy Spirit and train our spirit man to listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay. So these are eight ways that the Holy Spirit bears witness in our inner man. Okay. So we just looked at uh, this morning, we looked at, um, um, you know, prompting within, stirring within the foreknowledge within and also warning. And last week we looked at four of them. Okay. So um, let me give you an example of the warning within. In Acts chapter 20, verses 22 and 23, we read that Paul was planning to go to Jerusalem. And even as he was planning to go to Jerusalem, he feels very bound in his spirit okay and so he feels a tightening he feels a binding in his spirit and he knows that you know this is this this is a warning from the holy spirit that something bad is going to happen in jerusalem something bad is awaiting awaiting him there in jerusalem and so the holy spirit is warning him ahead of time so that he can prepare him uh, self okay so the holy spirit um, warns us we need to be um, and the Holy Spirit guides us in eight different, these eight common ways that we saw. There can be more ways that the Holy Spirit can guide us. Okay, but we just looked at eight of them common ways. But how do you know that the Holy Spirit is guiding you through these ways? You need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, which means you need to pray the Holy Spirit, continually keep in connection with the Holy Spirit. So how do we train ourselves Firstly, spending much time in worship, prayer, and reading God's word, and also constantly communing with God, communing with the Holy Spirit. It could even be uh, if you pray in tongues, you can keep on praying in tongues. Also, it's important for us to learn to be quiet and calm and still. The more quiet, calm, and still we are, the more clearly we will be able to hear the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, when the Holy Spirit bears inner witness in our spirit man, it's important for us to check, okay? We can have a prompting within, we can have a stirring within, a foreknowledge, you know, we can uh, receive all of these things, but we need to confirm whether it is the Holy Spirit speaking, because sometimes it can be demonic interference, it can be Satan, it can be our, the voice of our own uh, spirit, our own conscience, our own carnal nature. So it's important when you're taking important decisions and you're waiting on the Holy Spirit, you need to confirm if, you know, these, if you're receiving from the Holy Spirit, receiving guidance through these eight common ways, you need to confirm. So how do you confirm? First of all, you need to confirm it with the scripture. Go back to the word of God. Ask God to show you and confirm it through scripture that's one way you need to do it second way is ensure that there is no emotional natural emotional involvement which means sometimes you know if you're making a decision about your um, spouse or your children or your marriage you are emotionally attached to that person so whenever you're praying the answer will come 
Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So that is your emotional attachment, your emotional involvement. So you need to detach yourself uh, from that and you need to uh, listen carefully to what God is speaking. So you need to have asked God to confirm through other ways. It can be through prophecy. It can be through scripture. It can be asking other people to pray. It can also be through the warning within whether you're receiving the peace and, you know, the joy of the Lord is there. Okay. Another way that we can ensure that or confirm it's the Holy Spirit speaking to us or bearing inner witness is through when the Holy Spirit leads us, it should always glorify Jesus Christ. It should always bring Jesus the glory and the honor okay and also it should uh, align itself with god's purpose for your life now suppose you have a stirring within or a prompting within or you have having a foreknowledge that god wants to start a business okay which is a good thing but what you need to do is you need to check okay uh, have i got confirmations before that God wants me to start a business or it is just something on the spot I get the stirring suddenly I'm just thinking what I should do with my life okay let me do business so is it my own thoughts or is a foreknowledge that has come before somebody has prophesied God has spoken to me you know um, uh, through scripture he's spoken to me so if you have those confirmations you know that God is leading you towards that okay so you need to see if it is aligning itself with the overall plan and purpose of god for your life also there are some risks that uh, are involved and you need to be very careful um, you know sometimes when, when you're making important decisions you need to be careful about the risk that is involved okay um, now for example you know god is telling you hey or call this person up okay you call that person up and you say god told me to call you uh, up and speak to you is there anything wrong is there anything i can pray for they're saying no everything is all right everything is going well in my life so maybe that's not a big risk because just a phone call or you just go and visit somebody and you just find out that everything is fine with them there is nothing really wrong so maybe you just thought it was just yours you know your your natural mind that was just telling you or your emotions that were just leading you to go and uh, speak with them or meet them so there's not much of a risk that is involved but if you're taking major decisions in your life where risks can be very detrimental which can be very serious in your life then you need to wait and have different confirmations uh, wait for different checks test things even before you jump into things okay and the last one is you need to test the waters that means if god is asking you to do something you need to test for example if god is asking you to start a business okay you don't get excited and the next day don't go take a big loan and start a business you pray about it and then you think what business you need to take or, or, or get into and then you pray about it and then if god is leading you to start a business in a specific area you go and speak to people in those areas who have a business get to know things and then you keep praying and asking god to lead you and guide you and maybe god is putting in your heart or you're thinking about three people who can join you for this business your friends and you pray about it and then you go and speak to the first person and the first person says okay let me pray about it and then they come back and tell you after some time hey you know i sense god is leading me so you're it's a confirmation okay maybe god has put these three people in your heart you're getting a confirmation you go to the second person that person says i will also pray comes back and says hey i will join you so it's a confirmation so like that you need to test waters even before you jump into uh, serious things in your life or you're making serious decisions in your life it's important to always test and wait and receive multiple confirmations before you get into um, things that what God wants you to do or where God is leading you and guiding you okay so this is chapter four which is talking about the inner witness of the Holy Spirit anyone has any questions any questions uh, 
Yes. Can you please take the mic? It's not from the book, but it's about Holy Spirit. It's Matthew says, uh, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be for, forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Will not be forgiven. So I want explanation about this. Okay, whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit, because they're actually here in this context, they're actually talking, uh, they're going uh, against the very plan and the purposes of God. Okay, so God's in God's plan and purpose, He has sent the Holy Spirit uh, to, you know, for the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to um, fulfill, you know, or to com to do what He has purpose, envision. So when we are blaspheming the Holy Spirit, we are actually going against the very redemptive plan and the purposes or the very, um, uh, you know, we're going against the very plan and thoughts and the, 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 the purposes of God, what he has already foreordained, what he has already uh, planned. So it's going, totally going against God. So when we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, we are actually, you know, going against the very redemptive plan and the purposes of God. And that's why it says it is, you know, um, uh, it's something that God will not forgive us for. So is it for believers or for unbelievers? It's for believers because we are the, you know, um, we are the ones who know about the Holy Spirit, right? So if we blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, yes. Maybe that believer, I suppose, now he blasphemed with the Holy Spirit, mm. but, uh, but after some years, he just confessed and comes back to God. So will he sin be forgiven what do you think i'm confused about it what do you think is the nature of god what is the nature of god whenever you're confused about anything about god you need to go back to the nature of god so what is the nature of god he forgives yes he forgives sin so he's gracious compassionate merciful and forgiving and he forgives us so if, when you go back will he forgive us Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> Any questions? Sorry? Oh, camera is blurred. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else has any questions? Can we survive without problems in our life? In our life? One, two, two, five, many times. Can we survive without problems in our life? Yeah. Because uh, it's a uh, life is very strange. Our life are, is filled with are, problems. Yeah. Yes. We are uh, struggling in our life. Yes. We are, in full life, we are not able to stand it properly. So, so we can, uh, can survive in my life properly. Yes, we can survive. Why not? Because God has given us um, everything that we need for life and godliness. He's given us the weapons that we need for our warfare to fight against uh, everything that the enemy is coming and doing against us. He's given us the word of God that we can speak, declare. There are 3,000 promises in God's word. His promises are yes and amen. And when, when we speak those promises, we see situations uh, change. We see mountains move, giants come down. Um, we have the Holy Spirit who's our counselor, who's our guide, who's our uh, uh, helper, who aids us, who strengthens us. So why not? 
and God has won the victory on the cross over everything. He shares the victory with us. Hebrew says he's a captain of our salvation. Hebrews chapter 2 or chapter 3. He's a captain of our salvation. Then why not? God doesn't want us to live defeated lives and hopeless lives. That's not what he died for us, right? He took away everything on the cross that we can live the the Zoe life, the God kind of life. And he's, we, have, we have been given the fullness of the God has, has been given to us. We are complete in Christ Jesus. So it's important for you to know, it's important for you to know who you are in Christ. Once you know who you are in Christ, what authority you have been given, and Hebrews, uh, Romans chapter 6 says that we have, what is our identification? Our identification is that we are, um, our spiritual identification or the spiritual truth is that we have been crucified with Christ. We have been buried. We have been um, resurrected. We have been, um, we ascended with Christ and we're seated again at the right hand of God, the Father. So when we're seated at the right hand of the Father in the spiritual sense, what does it mean? That we have been given all authority and power and we can speak to those challenges and those challenges have to move so you need to know what authority and power you have been given and received and then you can walk in victory and not in defeat okay any other questions yes can you please pass the mic to him this side that side that side you can just pass it yes How to keep aside our natural emotion? How to keep aside your natural emotions? Yes. So what you need to do is you need to, um, you know, when you're going through a problem in a situation, you're very stressed. Your uh, your emotions are, you know, uh, like a roller coaster. Uh, you're not able to think right. You're not able to concentrate. So you need to give your time, yourself some time. In that time, you need to continue keep praying uh, in the spirit, praying to God, asking God to help you to control your emotions, to come to a place where you can hear him and receive from him. And you need to quieten yourself. Make your Come to a place where you learn to quieten yourself so that you can learn from the Holy Spirit. And also when you, you need to come to a place where you're saying, hey, I know I'm emotionally this one, but I'm going to lay aside my anger or my feelings of hurt, whatever. I'm just going to, you know, put it aside. I'm going to forgive that person, deal with those things. Uh, letting go of my anger, deal with the uh, unforgiveness, the jealousy, the hate, whatever. Ask God to help you in the process of healing your emotions. Then when you come to that place, you know, then you'll be able to listen uh, clearly from God. So it can take some time, but it will, you know, when you are in a place where you're settled and your mind is more at rest and, and at peace, then you can hear the Holy Spirit. Yes. But uh, don't keep thinking in your own mind, what should I do, what should I do, and keep on mulling over it and more anger, more stress, more jealousy, more hatred. You need to come to a place where that is weaned off, where you are dealing with it, asking God to help you, forgive, get rid of those things, and then, you know, uh, your natural emotions so you can uh, will, you will, will be set aside where you can hear the Holy Spirit. Good question. Anyone else has any questions? Uh, okay. Ma'am, I yes, have Jennifer. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, sometimes I'll be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. So continuously, so even when I'm working or uh, alone or praying, every time I'll be able to hear it. But uh, sometimes, like, uh, I was not able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit uh, for uh, two or three days. It will be like com complete silence. And I was able, after that, I will be able to hear him. So is there any particular reason or is that my thinking is like that Holy Spirit is not talking to me like that? Um, see, Holy Spirit is not just when you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can speak to you in different ways, like a warning, a peace, joy, happiness, 
can speak to you through scripture, can speak to you through sermons, through a, through a worship song. You can just experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. You can just experience the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So the different ways that the Holy Spirit speaks, not just the voice that you, of the Holy Spirit that you hear. Sometimes when you are praying about something and you're asking the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you, maybe it's also because like, you know, you're going through a lot of emotional uh, turmoil and you're not at peace in your mind. So, you know, you're not, you are not able to hear the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit also does not speak because uh, the Holy Spirit wants you to just go along with what he has given you last. Okay, or what he's spoken to you last, go with it. So you're praying about something. The Holy Spirit feels that there's needs no change in that area. You suppose I'm saying, God, I don't want to be in this workplace. I need to leave this workplace. I need something else. But the Holy Spirit is not speaking to you, which means the Holy Spirit is saying, continue in this workplace till I speak to you, lead you, and show you, um, you know, whether you need to move out from here. So when you're not hearing, sometimes when the Holy Spirit is also, just go with what the Holy Spirit is also telling you to um, to go with, or he's not, you know, maybe there's nothing that you need to hear now, or he's just speaking to you from the Word of God. So different ways. Uh, the Holy Spirit speaks, so you need to also discern different ways that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, not just through your through the voice of the Holy Spirit. Did that help, Jennifer? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. How to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit? I already I mentioned it. Get through it. I said we need to spend good time in uh, prayer, in worship, in reading God's word, praying in the spirit at all times, uh, communing with the Holy Spirit. We speak to the Father, Son, but we don't speak to the Holy Spirit. We need to commune with the Holy Spirit, speak to the Holy Spirit, uh, and then we will be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And also be calm, pause, listen, uh, and then you will learn to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Okay, any more questions? I hope that helped get through it. Any other questions? Thank Pass. you, sister. Okay. Yes, Anusha. How can we understand the confirmation about the business or something? How can we understand? It is the confirmation from the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, then we are prompting. There will be a stirring within for you to take an action. And also you can, um, uh, you know, you can ask God to, to show you from his word. He can speak through his word. His word has answers for any and every situation, even for business, even for the smallest thing. So a, a word, a, a rhema word or some, you're reading scripture and some word can just, you know, uh, just leap at you from the scripture passages and you know this is a confirmation also the holy you can ask the holy spirit to suppose it's from business you can ask the holy spirit to guide you and lead you and show you what you need to do which area and then you know the holy spirit will show you which area you need to start the business uh, he will show you who to contact and when you go you will find favor you will just find open doors um, uh, you know, and you will just sense um, God just moving. So you need to test the waters. Like I gave you an example of how to test waters for business. You know, you need to test you. Maybe you put in for a loan. The bank gives you the loan. Uh, everything is falling in place. Sometimes, yes, the things might not go smoothly. But irrespective of that, you will have the, um, you know, the warning within, which is you'll have peace and joy. Or if you have a lot of uh, anxiety, there is there's stress, things are not going properly, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of tightness, there's a feeling of binding. It's a warning that the Holy Spirit is saying, don't venture into um, this. So there are multiple ways that you can, um, you can, you know, uh, wait on the on god and ask the holy spirit to lead you and guide you it can also come to a prophetic word uh, somebody's praying for you you can ask people to pray for you and ask god to lead them uh, you know to show you what you need to do or whether it is a yes or a no uh, you can also wait on the holy spirit and ask him can you can hear the audible voice of the holy spirit so i mean the voice of the holy spirit is speaking to you so all of these can be different confirmations thank you pastor yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. 
ma'am it's about the particular situation when we got the confirmation and we apply all these things that uh, we have but and uh, we are praying for that thing for a long time but still we did not find the open doors so we can move forward so on that time what we supposed to do if you don't find open doors it might be it's not the kairos moment there's god works in chronos moments chronos time and kairos time chronos time is a chronological time where god is preparing you maybe god feels this is not the right time for you to get into it because if you get into it you're not mature enough you're not you know you don't have the skills you don't have the expertise you don't have the abilities and maybe he foresees that this is not the right opportune time for you to start there'll be a kairos moment when god will prepare you and he knows you're ready to launch you out and when you launch you out he knows you know the work will be excellent because you are skilled enough you're prepared enough competent enough to do what he has asked you to do another reason can also be maybe you are sensing that it is god is asking you to do if you if it's closed doors it means god is it's not what god is asking you to do it's your own desire you see that can also be another reason thank you any other questions yes can you pass it to him please and if uh, somebody is prophesying to someone and he is saying that you are going to become a good teacher so now he is in 12th standard so, so how, how he will get the confirmation how will he get the confirmation he has to go back to the scripture read the word ask god to speak to him through scripture ask the holy spirit to bear inner witness through one of these common ways prompting steering for knowledge whatever and also sense what the holy spirit is saying we will get confused about his future studies actually he, if he will be in 12th standard he will do his study or he will go to the ministry field so it doesn't mean that because somebody prophesied that he's going to be a preacher the very next moment he has to start preaching no see uh we see examples in we saw the examples right preparation process in uh, fulfilling god's purpose for your life even for jesus it took 30 years for the preparation pro pro process in 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 the sense not preparation the kairos moment was 30 years that was because if he had to be a rabbi people had to the 30 year 30 years was the right time when they were considered as as a rabbi okay not before that so he had to fall in line with the jewish cultures and uh, traditions so it doesn't mean that because somebody prophesied and said hey you're going to start a business tomorrow you go and start or you're going to be a preacher tomorrow you start preaching no god told me in 12th standard i wanted to come to full time ministry the next day i was not in full time ministry i started full time ministry almost 7 years after he had told me so i had gone to bible college i had prepared i prayed and asked god god said you i have to go to bible college i was not ready to go then but he shut every other door he opened a door for bible college so there was a sensing there was a leading there was a direction there was a move and how god provided he took care i studied for 6 years and then i stepped into ministry yeah so god reveals plans for knowledge that's a for knowledge within Five years, ten years. So why does God give us the Holy Spirit? Gives us four hours so that we can prepare for that. Prepare mentally, spiritually, emotionally, in every way. We prepare. Because for me, I needed that time because I was not ready to go to full time ministry. That was not what I was thinking about. But God called me, so I need to go through the preparation process. Did that help? Okay. Lucy says um, when two believers pray over certain things to go ahead and one gets confirmation and the other doesn't how do we act upon it we need to wait till the other person um you know receives the confirmation we're going to talk about that in a bit so you will understand more better Lucy so you can just wait for some time i'll just explain that yes good for knowledge as uh, so can good for knowledge about our death and god's for knowledge about our our death can it be is it possible about our what sorry death about death yeah how is it your death 
Why not? Uh, there was a word of wisdom and uh, that a, a preacher went to meet another preacher. He had built a new church and all of those things. The gifts of the Holy Spirit was working in him. So this preacher met him and he showed him all his new church and everything. And so this preacher was very happy. He came back. He was leaving to get into his car. And God told him, Holy Spirit told him, gave him a word of um, wisdom, said, go back. Um, uh, and knowledge, go back and tell this preacher that, you know, the way he's treating his people is not good. And the way he is, um, you know, living his lifestyle, the way he's eating is not a healthy way. If he's not going to change, he's going to die soon. So the this preacher goes back, tells him the word of wisdom and knowledge that he received. The, the preacher did not listen to him and he died in a few years time. So, yes, God can give us foreknowledge. Yeah. Okay, we we'll move on to chapter 5, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit is uh, the Holy Spirit himself speaking to us. It's much more stronger than the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Now, we looked at the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Don't confuse that. Okay. There's the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and there is also the voice of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, the inner bit, the voice of the Holy Spirit comes more stronger, louder, clearer in many cases than the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and the voice of the Holy Spirit is often or not always, you know, uh, instructive and directive. So, you know, you can hear the voice through the inner voice of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. To the inner voice, the audible voice, the voice of the Spirit in prophecy, and collective witness of the Holy Spirit's leading. Okay, so there is an inner witness of the Holy Spirit, which we saw eight different ways, but there are also the way the Holy Spirit speaks to us, and there are these three ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us the inner voice, the audible voice. The voice of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit also speaks collectively. It's a collective witness of the Holy Spirit's leading. Okay, so let's look at what is the inner voice. Now, the inner voice of the Holy Spirit is when the Holy Spirit is directing us. Uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us or making statements, but there is no audible voice. Okay, now when I am now I'm communicating something to you, right? I'm teaching you something, but then you can hear my audible voice. But the inner voice of the Holy Spirit is when you can hear the Holy Spirit speaking, but there is no voice. There is no, silly, no, you have to do this. Or, you know, silly, no, you have to do this. It's no audible voice. You can just, you know, then so you know the Holy Spirit is making statements, he's directing you, he is uh, leading you, but there is no audible voice, there is no sound, okay? But the Holy Spirit is com uh, communicating information in your spirit, man. There is clear direction, clear statements, but there is no voice. So what is an example? An example is, you know, when I was, I told you, when I was in 12th standard, I used to um, study till late in the night and I put off the light and I used to pray. And then the Holy, when I was praying, God, what do you want me to do next? The Holy Spirit is calling me into full time ministry. Now, I didn't hear the audible voice of the Holy Spirit saying, you have to go. Oh, you have to go to the it is not a soft voice, a calm voice, a soothing voice, or a loud voice, a deep voice, nothing. It was directions, it was guidance, it was statements that came, sentences that came, but I knew it was God speaking to me. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And I could not just hear that voice coming, but I knew in my inner spirit that it is the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Okay, so that is the inner voice of the Holy Spirit. And there is the audible voice of the Holy Spirit, which we read in scripture. The audible voice of the Holy Spirit was when Samuel, you remember Samuel when he was a small boy? God calls him Samuel, Samuel. Okay, so that is the audible voice of the Holy Spirit. What the prophets hear, heard was also the audible voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay, but uh, the audible voice of the Holy Spirit is very rare. It's a very rare experience. Not many people have heard the 
audible voice of the Holy Spirit, but they hear the inner voice of the uh, Holy Spirit. Okay. And there is also a voice. The third one is you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in prophecy. Now, I'm not going to explain that here because there is a complete chapter that we will be studying in just the next two in two chapters we'll be studying about prophecy. So then we will understand how the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to us in uh, to the audible voice of prophecy. Okay, we'll stop here. Um, we'll go for our break and then we'll come back and continue. Thank you.